Happy Chinese New Year, friends. I wanted to celebrate in a way with you as much as I could. So I've put together a little collection of some of my family's favorite dishes to cook this time of year. It's all about getting together with my mom and my dad usually and any other like close friends and family. And we just love to eat and enjoy each other's company. And I hope you do the same. Happy Chinese New Year. Wok toss noodles, easy right? Well, I have a few tips and techniques here that are gonna make your noodles even better. Let's make the best spicy prawn chow mein noodles. Okay, so stir fried noodles, a simple dish, which I think means that there's no room to hide. Like let's get everything absolutely perfect and then we get the very best noodle. Uh, I'm gonna start off with the stir fry sauce, first of all. And that's one of the things here, like I think getting the stir fry sauce done and made before you start stir frying uh, is gonna help you out because you can put everything in just at the right moment. So, oyster sauce, some soy sauce, some Shaoxing wine here. Now, I really think this kind of gives you that really great restaurant, like Chinese restaurant or Hong Kong restaurant kind of flavor. Uh, but look, you could leave it out or you could add a little bit of apple juice for just like a, a bit of fragrance if you want to keep your dish alcohol free. I've got some sesame oil here as well. And these are all things that I keep in my pantry. So, I mean, it's not uh, difficult ingredients. Um, it's just about timings and you know when you add things. Uh, so to that I'm going to add some cornstarch or corn flour. And this is going to help to make things nice and thick and shiny and glossy because of course for me chow mein noodles like they're not like a saucy noodle. They're a really kind of like they're a dry noodle but they've still got a bit of like stickiness to them if you like. So that's kind of what we're going for here. So the corn flour will help us do that. Now I also want some chicken stock and a little dash of sugar just to like round out those salty flavors. All right, so um, a little bit of kind of setup stuff here before we start stir frying. I want to start getting my wok really nice and hot. And then I also want to have a saucepan of boiling water over here already going because I want to cook my noodles and get them straight into the pan a little bit later on. Always be organized and then things will go smoothly, um, most of the time. Now we just wait for this to get hot. But it is important to be patient here though. <laughs> I know I'm always like harping on about get your wok or your pan really hot, but like the thing is like, if you don't get it hot to start with, it will never come back to temperature. And the whole thing about wok stir frying is that you have a really high heat um, that gives you that lovely char and that kind of smokiness. So. You know, there's always method to the madness. So when your pan is like scary hot, now you can put your oil in. Prawns go in. Whoa, I love that sound. Now, the thing is here that what you wanna do is spread the prawns out and give them like time. Um, you know, it's not like in the movies at the Chinese restaurant where you do everything really quickly and there's so much fire and, you know, it's not so dramatic when you're at home. You have to think about the fact that you need that wok to kind of come back up to heat um, and also give things that lovely colour, all that kind of thing. So let them sit for a little while before you start to stir fry. And then you can see, like, we've already got some really lovely, beautiful colour because we've had the nice hot wok and we spread the prawns out. Do you do much stir frying at home, guys? Big stir fryer. Are you? Yeah. Get out. It's one of my staples. Really? Yeah. But do you do the stir frying, I or do. does Teresa do the stir frying? Uh, bit, of, bit of both. Yeah. Wow. I mean, she's better, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just as an aside, you and Teresa should do a competition. A cameraman and his, and his wife. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah. I should go up against Tim. Now there's an idea that we could do that. Yeah. That could work. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Teresa would so. Yeah, just wipe the yeah, floor it'd be like me. a pants down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you want to explain what a pants down is for people that aren't Australian? <laughs> is that an Australian thing? I don't know. I... Okay, so a pants down is when you're playing pool at the pub or wherever, and if the other person sinks or wins the game before you've sunk any balls, then you have to pants down and run around the table. It's, I mean, it's the rule, right? <laughs> All right, so these prawns have a, such a lovely color on them. I'm gonna just throw in a little bit more oil here. 
I'm going to go in with some chili and some ginger. Ah, oh, that already smells so good. Uh, garlic as well. And now in with some veg. Now I always like to put my cabbage in dry. And by dry, I mean like a lot of recipes tell you to put the cabbage in and then put the sauce straight on top, but then you kind of just get soggy cabbage. Um, what I actually want is cabbage that's really beautifully kind of charred and, and kind of smoky. And um, yeah, so you want to stir fry the cabbage before the sauce. Also want to add in some carrot, which I just did. Now here's where I want you to be patient again. Uh, just keep stir frying a few minutes until you get that cabbage and the carrot wilting a little and there's lots of nice colour in there. Okay, so this is looking good. You can see it's kind of like got that, like, I don't know, I describe it as like an autumnal kind of feeling. Like it's lovely brown and that cabbage is looking really nice and kind of wilted but not soggy. So there you go. So what I'm going to do now is... Can I get a word check on that? <laughs> Autumnal, that word or another word? Autumnal, yeah. <laughs> Can you educate me on? Like the colours of autumn. <laughs> ah, I see. <laughs> okay, so Very we've got <laughs> hands down and autumnal in the same video. See, that's just what I offer here. Words <laughs> that don't make sense. <laughs> Okay, so the point is that I've, I'm going to turn the heat off now because I just want to stop this while I concentrate on my noodles. So I've got some um, chow mein noodles here and you could also use like Chinese egg noodles, fresh egg noodles if you want to, but I find that they're a little bit more, um, they tend to cook a lot quicker so you'll have to be a lot faster with the cooking. But try for the chow mein noodles. Pop them in your boiling water and then I don't want to leave them in for too long because I actually want the noodles to finish cooking in the stir fry with the sauce. So just like a couple of minutes here. Okay, so now pull them out. If you've got like one of these spiders, that's really helpful because you can just sort of like drain them directly on top of the pot there. Throw those into your wok. And now add in the sauce. So those noodles will soak everything up nice and shiny and glossy. Let's give that a toss. Wow, the smell of that Shaoxing wine actually is really lovely. Okay, so keep that kind of tossing around. Oh, I nearly forgot my snow peas. All right. I just like these for a pop of colour and crunch. So just pop them into the water that you were cooking the noodles in and keep tossing your noodles around. They'll really benefit from like getting some of that sizzle and char in the wok. So don't worry too much about them overcooking because we did cook them slightly under. I'm going to add some spring onion in here as well. Now let's get those snow peas out. And I'm basically just tossing here until I can see that those noodles have soaked up all of that sauce and they're just kind of like just tender but still sticky on the outside. All right, this is ready to serve up. Don't go anywhere yet though because I've got one final Amazing ingredient to add at the end here. So a nice pile of noodles, prawns. All right, now my little secret weapon here is some homemade chili crisp. Storeboard is fine too, but something like in a chili oil, spicy kind of range, that's what you're looking for. Okay, so you want a little drizzle of oil, but you also then want to get in here and get some of your like crunchy chili bits as well. Now, if you want a recipe for chili crisp, you can find one on my website, um, or you can use a store-bought one, as I said. Now that uh, is making me very happy before I've even tried it. But let's try it, shall we? All right, let's get in here. I need a prawn, some noodles. Mm. I mean, it's deceptively simple. Like it looks like a very simple stir fry, but that flavor, mm, charry prawns, that like beautiful smoky cabbage, mm, and the chili crisp at the end is so good. Mm, these are my kind of noodles. So yum.
You can make your noodle stir fry extra special just with like one extra hero ingredient. I always like to choose one special ingredient whenever I'm doing a stir fry and this one, it's Szechuan peppercorns. So if you have a look, these are, these are the, the Szechuan peppercorn guys and they have this really amazing like high citrusy kind of flavor, but they also do something else as well. They also give you kind of a tingling, numbing sensation. It, they're just like nothing else. Really cool. Look, if you don't have Szechuan peppercorns, try using a mix of white and black peppercorns or pink peppercorns, you know, whatever you've got on hand. Um, but these guys are really fun. You just want to pop them into a dry frying pan. Once you can kind of smell the aroma of the Szechuan peppercorns, and this is what this toasting of the spices is all about. It's about releasing the flavor and the fragrance. Uh, so once that's done, you know, you're good to go. Pop that into a mortar. And then just grind that to a fine powder. Okay, so this is the sort of thing that you're looking for here. And I'll just set that aside for later. Okay, so that's our special ingredient all ready to go. I've got a few other little things that I'm using here. I want some garlic. And some onion, just a fine dice for that one. And then aside from that, I've got some chicken thigh here, sliced really thin. It's one of the things that I'm always saying with stir fries, meat should be sliced really small, that way the cooking happens really quickly uh, and it keeps your meat nice and tender. Uh, and then we also have some broccoli too. You could use broccolini or any kind of Asian vegetable that you like. Uh, and now we are ready to get stir frying. So just need a little bit of oil. Now I'm gonna add in my onion. and the garlic. And now let's go in with our spices. So the Szechuan peppercorns. Now here's where you can go crazy or not so crazy with the chili. Um, I'm using a fair amount of chili powder here because you know me, I just, I like things crazy hot, but obviously use less if you would like. Now just give those aromatics and those spices a few minutes to get to know each other in there. Now that my onion's looking nice and tender, I'm going to add in my chicken. And then always, whenever I'm adding protein, I'm going to be stir frying it. I just kind of spread it all out in the pan. Make sure you've got as much heat and pan as possible coming into contact with every piece of meat. And you just want to give that a few minutes get some nice golden color. And so while the chicken's doing its thing, I want you to get a big pot of boiling water ready because we're going to cook our noodles very soon. Now that chicken is starting to smell really good. Let's just give it a bit of a toss. And that is starting to look nice and spicy, just the way I like it. Uh, now, at this point, I'm gonna get my noodles into the hot water. So at this point my chicken looks like it's just pretty much cooked. Uh, I'm just going to keep it warm on the stove top there while I wait for my noodles. Alright, these noodles are starting to look good and as I always say, there is nothing worse than a soggy noodle. So keep your eye on the noodles guys and I always like to check you know, a few minutes before the packet instructions say they should be ready. Mm. This is still a little bit firm which is perfect because I want to add in my broccoli to that boiling water. I'm just going to give that broccoli two minutes and by then broccoli will be tender, noodles will be cooked. Okay, we're looking good here. All of this needs to go in with my chicken. And now it's time to get all the saucy seasoning bits and pieces in. So really simple oyster sauce and some soy sauce. Okay, so this is the fun part, really. Uh, you wanna be tossing those noodles around and keep tossing because what happens is that that kind of thin sauce down the bottom magically turns thick and glossy and will just coat beautifully each strand of noodle. This is starting to look really good. So that's what we're looking for. See how glossy that sauce is and thick and yum. Okay, okay, we're good, we're good. Let's get this down into a bowl.
And to finish off, just some spring onion. And there you go, guys. You know, it doesn't have to be overly complicated to be special, I think. Um, let's get in there and have a look, though. Mm. Noodles, always a little complicated to eat on camera, but wow. That spice, so perfect. I love that. It is literally like a big punch of chili and Sichuan peppercorn and mm, mm. And then just a really good seasoning sauce. I mean, oyster sauce and soy sauce. Keep it simple. And then you've got the peppercorns really being the star of the show and that spiciness. Mm. So good, so simple. Love this one. Mm. More noodles for me. <laughs> Yum. Mm. Epic. Oh yeah. So that's like bang you in the face. It, that's like whoo, that's really. <laughs> it's really spicy and tingly and like amazing fiery hot tingling packed full of spices friends this is one Sichuan classic dish you need to know about this is Sichuan spicy boiled fish so this is one of my all-time favorite restaurant dishes and I always for years thought it was way too complicated to make at home but actually as it turns out, it's not. <laughs> it just tastes really complicated, but this is the version I've figured out that's a bit easier to make at home than the restaurant version. First up, we wanna deal with the fish. Now, I just have some fillets of snapper here. Yes, if you were doing this classically in the restaurant, you might use a whole fish fillet, use the bones, everything. So much easier just to use the fillets at home. Um, I wanna slice these sort of on a diagonal so that I get nice, large, flat, pieces, flat-ish pieces. Um, and the whole deal with the fish in this dish is that the way that we marinate it is going to alter the texture of the fish. So rather than having a really soft fish that sort of breaks apart, our marinade is going to almost firm up the fish and give it like a velvety texture. Now you can use any sort of white fish fillet that you have in your area. Uh, you know, cod would be great, halibut, uh, any of those sorts of things. So let's get on to those marinade ingredients I was talking about. First up is Chinese cooking wine. So you can find this online, really easy to order online or from an Asian grocer. It's gonna give us some flavor. And then also we want some corn flour. So this is going to help us with the texture. It's gonna give that velvety feel, firm up the fish, all those sorts of things. So just a little bit of that and a pinch of salt here. And now give that a really good mix. Now just leave that to marinate while we get the rest of the dish ready. Now, as I said, this home version of mine is very easy, but there are quite a few ingredients and spices, um, but not anything you shouldn't be unfamiliar with if you've been a follower, a long time follower of my channel. First of all, let's get going on building the broth. This whole dish is all about building layer and layer and layer of flavor. So a little bit of oil, first of all. And some star anise. cinnamon stick and this really is a key ingredient guys you need to get a hold of some Sichuan peppercorns search them out online they're the ingredient that will add the super numbing tingling sensation that is uh, a classic Sichuan characteristic some cardamom pods and some dried chilies now these are like kind of the spicy bird's eye dried chilies, they're really hot. Uh, this dish should be really hot, but look, you can go with like a milder dried chili if you wanted to tone it down a little bit. Now give all of those spices in there time to make friends. Mm, that smells glorious already. Now we can go in with some garlic, some ginger, Oh wow, that really is a killer combo already. The 
literally, so the fragrance right here is, is so beautiful. It's just got all of the spices and the chili and the garlic and the ginger. Oh, I'm having such a good time already. <laughs> but we need to go in with a few more things. So this is uh, Doban Jiang. It is a Sichuan chili bean fermented paste. And this is gonna give you color, sort of a rich umami kind of flavor. You could substitute miso and a little bit of gochujang or miso and a little bit of just regular chili garlic paste if you can't get a hold of this. And then these are some salted black beans. Look, I've made this without this ingredient before and you can get away with it, but if you can, this adds a really lovely salty, again, salty umami element. And what you need to do with these guys is just soak them in a little bit of water first of all, and then they soften up a little and now you can add them into the dish. And now here's another little cheat. So as I said, typically, classically, you would make this with the whole fish bones. I'm gonna go with some store-bought fish stock here um, because, you know, I'm just making things still good, but a little bit easier. Now season that with just a little dash of soy sauce at this stage. You can always add a little more later if you like. Now I want to let all those flavours really develop and I want that fish broth to really take on all of the yumminess. So let that simmer for about 10 minutes. In the meantime, we're going to prep some veggies. So I've got some bean shoots here and I'm just going to blanch them in some boiling water. And I've also got some snow pea shoots as well. Now this little jumble of vegetables literally needs like seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds. I'm gonna pull them out. Just so they're still nice and sort of crunchy and tender, but just that raw edge has been taken off. Okay, pop those into a really large serving bowl. And we're gonna pour our soup on at the end over that. So our broth has been dutifully bubbling away here. And now I'm gonna go in with my fish. Now I don't want to overcook that fish, so barely kind of like three minutes here, just until the fish turns opaque. Perfect. Now turn the heat off and we're still not done yet. We've got some more work to do in this wok, but for the minute, I want to decant all of this mixture into that serving bowl. I just need a little bit of spring onion here. And a sprinkling of sesame seeds. And now for that final little bit of hot oil goodness, amazingness. Um, let's start off with some chili oil. So typically you use just regular oil. I like to do half and half, half chili oil, half regular oil, just so you get a really bright red color and like an extra layer of flavor. Cause I mean, who doesn't want an extra layer of flavor? <laughs> now go in with some more Szechuan peppercorns, some more chili. Literally this dish is like, you know, you love it if you're a masochist, but anyway, I just love it because I like spicy things but it's kind of like scary spicy. Anyway, give that a little bit of a sizzle. And now pour this over the top so that those spring onions get like sizzly and stuff. You'll see. And there you go, friends. My version of the very classic Sichuan boiled fish, but like an easier version for you guys to make at home. I need to get in here because like this is just heaven. It should be. Mmm. Like a little bit velvety. Almost like a little bit chewy in a good way. Mmm. Honestly, guys, if you make like one or you try one dish from like one Sichuan dish, it has to be this one. Ah, hello, 
honey. It's time for dinner. We're having roast chicken. We're having roast chicken. You got scared up here. Did you? How do you get roast chicken with the crispiest, most golden skin and the juiciest meat inside? Well, I have the answers, everyone. This is my very best salt and pepper roast chicken. All right, so there are so many different ways to roast a chicken. My way is hotter and faster. I think the hotter the heat, the crispier skin you get, and I'm all about crispy skin, uh, and also the less time that bird spends in the oven, the less chance we have of drying out some of that white breast meat. So there are all the reasons why. Let's get into the actual making. Now I'm going to do a salt and pepper flavor with mine, so a slight kind of little Asian flair. Uh, I'm going to start with some black peppercorns and I want some white peppercorns as well. So I like the mix here of the black and the white. I think you get a really nice, I don't know, kind of milder pepper flavor from the white and then a kind of harsher, also more spicy kind of flavor from the black. There you go. And just grind those up. Okay, so this is the kind of situation that we're after with our pepper. I want to keep it quite coarse because um, I really want those hits of pepper uh, when I'm biting into my chicken. And now I'm going to add some salt. Really good flaky sea salt here is, is what I love, but you know, you could use kosher salt as well. Okay, so we are not going to do anything super tricky or fancy here because quite frankly, we don't have to. Um, there are a couple of things we do need to do though. One, we need to fill the cavity. So you always want to fill the cavity of your chicken so that you don't get too much hot air cooking the chicken from the inside out. That is when you're going to get dry chicken. So I just want a lime or a lemon would be fine as well or an onion even. And now trussing. So you don't have to get all fancy with the trussing either. All you really want to do is pick these legs up and kind of pull them together because you're kind of then making the whole chicken a bit more compact. Again, we're trying to make sure that things don't dry out. So if you've got some legs flapping around everywhere, then you've got more chance of things drying out. So pick the legs up and just tie them together with some string. Now, make sure those wing tips are tucked underneath, just like that. All right, now we wanna go in with our salt and pepper mix and we want a lot. So I pretty much wanna use the whole lot all on this chicken and really kind of rub it in there. Give that guy some love. And that is looking very good. And now you want to go in with a much higher temp than you might normally think. So usually about 180 degrees Celsius is what is recommended in recipes. We're going to go in at 250 and that is 480 in Fahrenheit. So really hot. All right, so you guys know me by now. Of course, what am I going to have with my chicken? It's going to be a spicy dipping sauce. Uh, so we are going with a Thai style Nam Dim Dao sauce today. A really traditional kind of funky, uh, spicy sauce. So first up, we want some fish sauce. And now I want some tamarind. So tamarind is an ingredient that's really sour and you can find it in like most Asian grocery stores or online these days and some brown sugar. So we've got the fish sauce, it's like salty, umami, a bit funky. You've got the sour tamarind, you've got the sweet brown sugar. Now we wanna go in with some shallots. Okay, so this just needs to be roughly chopped. And I want some chili flakes here. As much or as little as you like, but this sauce traditionally should be like fire, like it should be really hot. Um, so I put a fair bit in and some coriander as well.
and then finally some lime juice. And let me just see if this sauce is tasting good because you always need to check for seasoning here. Mm, I love that. Whoa, it is spicy. Uh, it's got that really funky like like fish sauce, savory kind of kick. Uh, and then those shallots as well, really kind of all just works together. That is one beautiful spicy sauce. All right, so now we're just waiting for our chicken. So at this temperature, your bird is gonna need 20 minutes per 500 grams. Uh, and that should work out to be perfectly cooked. Whoa, I mean, okay, come on, check out that chicken. That is really a work of art, amazing. Like that skin, that beautiful color, that crispy, salty, peppery goodness on there. Oh, oh, truly perfection, I'm so excited about this. Okay, so let's make sure that our chicken is cooked and I'll show you guys how we do that. Let's get the chicken onto a board. And then you just wanna have a look inside this leg joint part here. Just cut that open and make sure all those juices in there are running clear. If they're pink, still not done, pop them back in the oven for a few more minutes. All right, so in an ideal world, you would let your chicken rest for about 10, 20 minutes. Um, I really need to get dinner on the table at this point in time because as those of you with toddlers would know that you kind of get to a witching hour point of the day where the screaming doesn't stop. <laughs> so I'm gonna get my chicken carved right now. Um, all right, so I'll break this down for you guys. Really simple way to carve a chicken. First of all, we take those strings off the legs. Okay, now legs first, cut through here. And now legs and thighs are always in high demand at my place. So I try to, you know, divide them up in as many pieces as possible. So we wanna get the drumstick first. And then cut that thigh in half. Look at that glorious chicken skin. And now we want some wings. Now you want to slice through that breast. Try to make sure you're not disturbing too much of that beautiful crispy skin. You want each piece to have a nice whisper of skin there to crunch through. And then just slice that breast. And there you go. All right, quick word about what we've got left over after we've carved our chicken. One, you have a pan full of like schmaltzy, yummy, salty chicken fat. Do not waste that. You could make a pan sauce out of it or I like to save it and kind of toss some potatoes in there next time I'm roasting and get them all chickeny and salty and yummy. So save that. Uh, and then we have the chicken carcass. Put that in the freezer and make yourself a chicken stock at a little later date. Uh, roasted chicken carcass always makes for great stock. All right, but let's get to our roast chicken. All I need to do now is get my spicy sauce on the side. And there you go, guys. The very best roast chicken I know how to make, and I am super excited for you guys to try this one. Uh, but let me try this first so I can tell you all about it. Now, I know that you guys know that I'm a legs and thighs girl, so that would be cheating to try that. I am gonna try the breast and tell you how well we've done with the juiciness. Let's have a look. Okay, I'm telling you, like, you know, chicken breast gets a bad rap. I promise you, if you do it just like this, it is insanely good. That is so juicy, it literally could be a piece of thigh. I mean, out of this world good, guys. Ah, oh, so good. Let me get some spicy chicken sauce, too. Mm. Now that really makes me one very happy girl. That salt and pepper chicken flavor, that really juicy breast, and then that spicy kick of flavor 
Wow. Just wow. I mean, yes. So looking forward to dinner tonight. Steamy dumplings loaded up with a whole bunch of spice. You guys know this is like my idea of heaven. This is my version of Northern Chinese beef dumplings. Okay friends, so the real secret to these dumplings comes with like all the little added bits of spice and fragrance and aromatics that comes in the filling. Plus, I have a special little thing that I do for dumpling fillings to make sure we get like the ultimate juicy kind of filling rather than like hard as a rock golf balls because who wants that? No one. Let's get onto the filling first of all. Now, I'm gonna go in here with some beautifully fresh ground spices. This is gonna make all the difference here. Uh, we're gonna start off with some Sichuan peppercorns and to get the best out of this spice or to get the best out of you know any whole spices, you wanna heat them up so that the oils and and the aromatics are all kind of released and warm and delicious. So I just want a few of these in my pan. This is interesting because this batch of Szechuan peppercorns that I'm using here has some of these little black seeds in there. So I know that you can, you, I think you can see that in here close up. The interesting thing about Szechuan peppercorns is it's not actually the seed or the peppercorn that you want. It's actually this beautiful red husk on the outside that gives you the flavor and the tingling sensation and the spice and all the things. This little black thing here, or the little black seeds, um, they will actually give you like a gritty, sandy kind of texture. So you don't actually want too many of those in your mix. So I'm gonna go ahead and scoop these out. So in fact, Szechuan peppercorns are actually just the seeds of a prickly ash shrub or tree, um, not actually peppercorns. There you go. The world has been lying to you. <laughs> Now, one of the things that makes this or gives this kind of like that northern Chinese flavor to me, cumin seeds. So this spice is quite common in a lot of northern Chinese cooking and it really adds something special to these dumplings. Now you just wanna keep these spices moving in here and just when you can see those little tendrils of um, smoke coming off the pan, that's when they're ready to go. All right, these are looking good. Pop them in here and you just want a fine powder here. So this is the texture that you're looking for. I'm gonna pop that straight into my bowl here. Now let's talk about the beef. I am not afraid of fat, as you guys would know. Fat has a lot of flavor, so I am never buying lean beef. You can take that as um, gospel from me. Uh, look, if you wanted to, you can, but the fattiness of the beef, you can see here, it's kind of like an 80% fat, 20% meat um, situation. And that juiciness is gonna give you that nice, juicy, silky mouthfeel to your dumpling filling. So that's why I like it. Here we go. I want some garlic here as well. Some coriander. Now, if you're someone who doesn't like coriander, um, some spring onion would be great here as well. I want some soy sauce here. And some fresh ginger. This one's quite a young ginger and the skin is quite thin, so I'm just gonna grate it straight in there. And now here comes the little bits and pieces that are gonna make all the difference to the texture and the juiciness and all the good things. Um, so first off, I'm gonna add some corn flour and that corn flour is going to kind of mix with the liquids in the dumpling filling and give things like a silky kind of texture. And then I'm gonna add some water. So it might seem weird to add so much liquid into a dumpling filling, but you'll see at the end, you really get a lot of that lovely juiciness coming through the filling when you make it a little wetter than you would think. Now just give this a really good mix. Mm. Okay, so already I'm getting such joy out of this dumpling mix. You know, I've got the spices, um, the garlic, the ginger, all the things that I love. And now to get your dumplings all folded and ready to cook, um, I'm using gouji wrappers today. Gouji wrappers are basically a water and flour um, dumpling wrapper. These are store-bought. Uh, you can also make them yourself at home. I have a video on how to do that if you would like to, but you could also use gyoza wrappers here as well, or a wonton wrapper. You know, the main thing is that you've got your lovely wrapper and then that epic feeling inside. So, you know, go your own adventure. It's all good. Now, I want some of that filling in the center here. A little bit of water for the edges. 
Now I'm going to do a really simple dumpling fold today because whenever I have dumplings destined for chili oil, I want to create as many like cracks and crevices uh, as possible so that when I'm um, scooping up the dumpling, it sort of scoops the chili oil and the spices and everything together. Just two pleats is what I'm going to do. So one pleat at the top here, press that down. Another pleat coming in from the side, press that down. And then the important thing obviously is to get all of that air out because if you have any air left inside there, your dumpling will explode and that will be very sad indeed. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. This kind of shape here, we're kind of flat on the bottom side here and that's gonna give us lots of crevices to catch that chili oil. Hey mum, could you do me a favour and just grab one of those bowls from out there and put some cold water into it? Uh, the bowls are out, out in the kitchen, underneath where the chopping board is. Perfect, thank you. Just here? Just here? Yep. Okay. Thanks mum. Okay. <laughs> Best sous chef in the world, hey? Maybe chef possible. Oh, thanks mum. <laughs> it's your birthday tomorrow. I'm going to make you some dumplings. Happy birthday. The dumpling for me. Yeah, they're for you. you. <laughs> Don't say I never no. gave you anything. Yes, no. oh, I'm the best daughter in the world, isn't that what you yes. say? Yeah. To cook our little friends here, we're going to go through a bit more of a technique than we usually do. Because these they are quite fat and they're beef dumplings, they take a bit longer to cook. And I don't want the dumpling wrapper on the outside to overcook before the filling is cooked. So you've got your boiling water and your dumplings go in. And then straight away you go in with some cool room temperature or cold water, pour that in. And that immediately sort of drops the temperature of the water, slows down that um, boiling process, which means that the um, inside has longer to cook before the outside gets overdone. So there you go. These will need about three minutes or so, three, four minutes until they're cooked all the way through. Okay, these are looking good. I'm getting very excited because I get very excited about dumplings. And I just wanna scoop them up straight into a bowl. And now here's the thing. I mean, we gotta get spicy or more spicy here. So I want some chili oil, lots of chili oil. Some soy sauce, just a little bit of extra kind of salt and oomph at the end here. And then finally, just a little sprinkling of greenery to make everything a bit more special. Coriander and spring onion, but you could choose one or the other. So there you go. I mean, look at that. That is literally, actually, I mean, I couldn't get any more like heaven if I tried. That looks amazing. I'm gonna get in here, just make sure that I've done a good job. You know what I mean. Oh, that looks divine. <laughs> you know, we're filming a video here. No, I don't. <laughs> Why don't you come and eat this dumpling, huh? Just try, I, yeah, you, you try the dumpling and tell me what you think. Here you go. Here you go. Not that there? I think you will have to get the chopsticks. You have the chopsticks, okay. Don't, wanna, don't get messy on the camera, Mum. Mmm. Lovely. Is that good? Mm. You're going to have them? Yeah, okay. Well, I'll have a go. Well, I need some other chopsticks here. Why not? Put you in spoon. Mm. No chopstick. That's really good. Mmm. Do you know what's great about this? Like, you know all the trouble we went to with the corn flour and all that kind of stuff? Like, if you have a look, you know, if you press down on here and you have a look at all those mm -hmm. juices inside the dumpling, I mean, mm -hmm. that's really key. That's what gives you the, the great dumpling, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. You probably we would don't. make dumplings better than me, though. Marion, Marion better than mummy now, mama. No, that's not true. My mum's always tastes better. Mm. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, make dumpling for my birthday. You're very welcome anytime. All right, great. Bye bye. Cut. Oh, bye bye. <laughs> I taught Marion how to make dumpling. Just the perfect ratio of that chewy wrapper, that crispy bottom, and then that lovely sweet prawn garlic chive filling. Ah, oh, heaven. 
So we're gonna go all out here and make our own dumpling wrappers for this recipe. So I've got some plain flour and I'm just gonna make a well in the center here. And I'm gonna pour in just some hot water. It's been boiled and then left to sit for a couple of minutes just to cool a little bit, but it's still warm. Keep mixing that through. And I just wanna be able to see the dough coming together. So once I can see that dough and the flour coming clean off the bottom of the bowl, I know we're in good shape. Okay, and I'm just gonna flour my bench top here and pull that out. And we just wanna knead this until we get a nice smooth dough. You really wanna let your fingers tell you a little bit about what this dough is doing. So I can feel this dough is a little bit sticky. So I'm just adding a little bit more flour. Now you wanna knead this until the dough gets really firm and beautifully smooth. It's only been a couple of minutes and I can see if I press my finger into that dough, the dough bounces back. Now our dumpling dough goes into a little Ziploc bag and I want to close that up. Okay, now I'm using some garlic chives for my dumplings today and I've got these really beautiful flowering garlic chive stems and these are really common in Thailand, but don't let that put you off. If you can't find these particular garlic chive stems, um, then I would just use regular Chinese garlic chives or you can use some spring onion with some chopped fresh garlic through the dumpling mixture as well. Now for the prawns, just take half or just over half of your prawns first of all, and we're gonna mince this half of the prawns very finely. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to that prawn paste that I've made. And then for the remaining prawns, we just want some nice little chunks. These are quite large, so I'm gonna cut these prawns in half first. Run my knife quickly back through those prawns. So next I want some finely chopped water chestnuts some soy sauce, white pepper, and another good pinch of salt. Now mix that vigorously and you'll find that the filling starts to become more sticky and almost like a dough, it sort of comes together a little bit more. Okay, so let's have a look at our dough. And now that it's had time to relax a little bit, I can see if I push down, it's beautifully soft. It's had a little bit of steam time in that bag. It's ready to go. So let's just get a little bit of flour out onto this bench top. Cut that in half first. Okay, so I'm just rolling that out to a log, make sure it's even, and then cut these into little pieces. Now, just roll them up into little balls. Let's now make our wrappers. So I'm gonna let you on a little secret. The best utensil is a plastic cup. Okay, so now that we've got about a palm size circle of dumpling wrapper, now what I wanna do is flatten out the edges. Cause of course, whenever you're making a dumpling, you're folding the edges onto each other, which means the edges should be thinner than the middle part of the wrapper. Now make sure you're putting plenty of flour on top of those wrappers once you've got them rolled so they don't stick together. Now to make our beautiful dumplings, take one of these wrappers and for a homemade wrapper, which is about palm, just over palm size, you could add in a heaped tablespoon of filling. Now if you're using store-bought gyoza wrappers, you'll find you'll need to fill it a little bit less. We just focus on the top half of that dumpling wrapper first and make those pleats there. So bottom half still has no pleats, it's nice and flat. And then we go on the other side, pleat that side, and there you go. Push everything together. Now to achieve the ultimate pot sticker, we really want to get that crispy, crunchy bottom plus that nice, chewy, steamed dumpling wrapper. So just one more little technique we need to master to get it right, and that's the cooking method. So a little bit of oil into a non-stick pan. Now once that oil's hot, I want to put in my dumpling and I just want to hear the barest whisper of a sizzle. I want to let these gently sizzle away a little and start to get some of that caramelization on the bottom just for a couple of minutes. So once I can see just that little bit of golden brown starting to happen on the bottom, now we want to start the steaming process. So make sure you've got a lid for your pan and put that over the pan to protect yourself from the oil that it's gonna splatter out when we pour the water in. That water should come up about a quarter of the way up the side of the dumpling and then put the lid on and let that steam away. I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit as well. Now, after about five minutes, I can see that those dumpling skins are starting to get nice and tender. What I wanna do is just take that lid off a little bit 
to release some of that steam because eventually we want that water to completely evaporate. Now while those dumplings are cooking, I'm gonna make a very simple dumpling sauce with some soy sauce, a little bit of vinegar, some sesame oil, and a good spoonful of chili powder. So it's been a couple more minutes and now I'm gonna take the lid off completely. So the dumplings themselves will tell you when they're ready. I can see that the liquid has just about all but evaporated and when I lift up the dumpling, it comes away cleanly from the bottom of the pan so it's not sticking and it's beautifully charry and crispy and dark brown on the bottom. Mm, it's just exactly what we want.